Using the midpoint of a line segment to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector and the equation of a line passing through a median. It's the longest title ever. So yesterday we did the midpoint of a line segment, which is just add the x's up, divide by 2, add the y's up, divide by 2, and that gives you your coordinates for the midpoint. So today we're going to do perpendicular bisectors first and then the equation of a line passing through a median. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. So perpendicular bisector is a line that is perpendicular to and passes through the midpoint of a line segment. So that's where we get to use the midpoint that we just figured out. Perpendicular means that if I know the slope of the line segment, I will need to find the negative reciprocal, which will be the slope of the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a line segment like this, and we want to find the line that is perpendicular to this, so I want and passing right through the middle of it. So I want a line that's going to come down like this, and it's going to be perpendicular, and it's going to be a line. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with this example here. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector for the line segment with endpoints 1, 1 and 5, 3. So maybe we uh, we should draw a little a little picture here. So do this very quickly. We're going to draw a line segment and we're just going to approximate this one. So let's go one, one and two, three, four, five and up one, two, three. So let's say that's my B here. That will be five, three and A down here, which is one, one. And this is my line segment. Remember, you can't find the midpoint of a line. It has to be a line segment. And if, first, if I want the perpendicular bisector, I need to know where is it going to bisect. So bisect means for you, it's going to scream at you, scream at you to find the midpoint first. And we're doing lines. You're very familiar with doing lines, so this shouldn't be hard. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the midpoint. Midpoint of AB. So I'm going to say midpoint AB. B, that's a B. Equals. Now remember what we did. We put brackets. Don't forget the brackets because you're finding a coordinate. So I add the x's up, 1 plus 5, and the other coordinates are 1 and 3 for my y's, and I'm dividing by 2. Okay, so there's my formula, and all I have to do is the itty-bitty math here. 1 plus 5 is 6, divided by 2 gives me 3, and 1 plus 3 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So this point here, so this is 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2. So that's midpoint AB, and it is 3 and 2. Okay, so now I want to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So it's not just a matter of finding the midpoint. I need to know a line. To find the equation of a line, I need the slope. So I need the slope of this line here and a point. Remember, that's all you need to find the equation of a line. So I need slope and a point. So step one was find the, the midpoint. Two, now we're going to find find the slope. The slope. Well, what can we find the slope of? We can't find the slope of this line right away without knowing the slope of AB. So I'm going to find the slope of AB and take the negative reciprocal, because you know that a perpendicular line uh, to another line has a negative reciprocal for its slope. Negative reciprocal. Okay, so what is the slope of AB? Remember slope, rise over run. Rise over run, rise rhymes with wise. So we take the slope 
we are going to do the change in the y over the change in x. So 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 1. Now remember when you do slope, you have to do it in the same order. So if I did this one first, if I did 1 minus 3, I'd have to do 1 minus 5. Or if I did the way I did it, it was 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 1. Make sure you do it in the correct order. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 5 minus 1 is 4, and that reduces, always reduce, to 1 quarter. So that's the slope of AB. Now I want to know what the slope of this line is going to be. So I'm going to say, therefore, slope of perpendicular, I'm going to write it like this, perpendicular bisector is negative 4, the negative reciprocal. So if this was 3 quarters, I would flip it and it would become minus 4 thirds. But because it's 1 quarter, I flip it and change the sign. So the reciprocal of 1 quarter is 4 and the negative of a positive is a negative. So now I have a point on my line. So you need two things always for the equation of a line. So this is my point and this is my slope. And then all I have to do is go to my favorite equation for a line and I would pick y equals mx plus b. So this is step three. Find the equation of the line. Equation of the line. Okay, so I have slope is minus one quarter. That's my m, right? So m, m equals minus four. And this is my point here. And this is, of course, x and y. So all I have to do is plug those now into this equation. So my y is 2. So I'm going to say 2 equals slope is minus 4. x is 3 plus b. So now all I have to do is... Um, Oh, I guess I made a mistake here, didn't I? 2 over 4 isn't 1 over 4, it's 1 over 2. Oh, Miss Havrod. So that's minus 2. At least I found it before too late. Like, as in before I publish this video. Okay, so now I have 2 equals, I bet some of you were screaming at me on the video, only I didn't hear you. If you were in my class, I would have heard you made a mistake. B equals 8. Okay, so now I have my B. So therefore, the perpendicular bisector, bisector is Y equals M is minus 2X plus 8. And there's the equation of your perpendicular bisector. Okay, so don't make silly mistakes like I did there. Okay, let's talk about medians now, because they're a little trickier and kind of interesting. So I've got lots of things written down here for you. So we have a median. What is a median? You find the equation of a median. No, you don't find the equation of a median. You find the equation of a line which contains... Is this on the screen? No. Here we go. Equation of a line which contains... The median because the median is just a line segment right so a median is a line segment that joins the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side okay midpoint see there's where we get to use our midpoint formula if you draw all three medians on a triangle they will intersect at one point called the centroid very interesting little point, which is the center of the mass of the triangle. So if you find that point and um, you cut out the triangle, you could actually balance it at that point. The centroid can be found by finding the intersection of two lines containing the median 
or by using this formula. So there's a very nifty little formula here which says if you add up all the x's and divide by 3 and add up all the y's and divide by 3, you'll get the centroid. So I'm going to show you two ways to get there because your teacher may ask you to find two equations of lines first and find their point of intersection, which is actually getting you to show that you understand two of the things that you need to know from analytic geometry. And actually it combines that with your system of equations lessons. Good exam question. Okay, so find the equation of the line containing the median from vertex A in triangle ABC and I give the coordinates. So I've already drawn that out here. So we have vertex A is right here and we want to find a median goes from here to the midpoint of the other side. So I want to know what is the midpoint of BC first. Okay, so let's do that. So midpoint, midpoint of BC equals, so I add them up, I divide by 2, the x's and the y's. So the midpoint of BC would be 3 plus 7 and the y's 5 minus 3. So that's going to give me 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So if I go to 5 and 1, look, it's right there. Right there. So now if I draw a line from the vertex A to this midpoint, this would be the median from here to here. And of course, median is part of a line segment. It's part of a line, sorry, it's a line segment of a line. So the line actually keeps going like this, right? Lines go on forever. So if a teacher asks you, find the median, you're finding this from here to here. And the line that passes through the median, of course, goes on forever. Okay, so a little bit of semantics here. So we have this point, 5, 1, that point is on the line here. So this is my line. We have two points on this line now, minus 3, minus 1, and 5 and 1. So if I want to know what the equation is of this line, I need, again, to know two things. I need to find the slope, and I need to use one of the points. You get to choose which one. I tend to choose things that are positive. Okay, so let's find the slope, and let's give this... Uh, point here a letter. We'll call it D. Okay, so what is the slope of AD going to be? So rise over run, just like Elmer Fudd, the Y is over the 1. So Y is on the top, so I have 1 minus minus 1. And in the denominator, the run will be 5 minus minus 3. Always put your minus minuses in brackets so you don't make a mistake. So 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2. And 5 minus minus 3 is 5 plus 3, which is 8. And 2 over 8 becomes 1 over 4. Okay, so I have the slope. And I have two points that I can use to find the equation of the line. So I'm going to choose 5 and 1. Okay, so now we're going to write out the equation of the line, which is y equals mx plus b. And my slope is 1 quarter, so that's m. My y, I'm going to use 1. My x, I'm going to use 5. So 1 equals 1 quarter times 5 plus b. So 1 equals 5 quarters plus b. Hmm. y equals 5 quarters plus b. So I didn't leave enough room here, but I'm going, I want to put it all in here because I'm going to do something else underneath here. So 1 is 4 quarters. 4 quarters equals 5 quarters plus b. And that means b is going to be equal 4 quarters minus 5 quarters is minus 
one quarter. So therefore, y equals one quarter x minus one quarter is the line that makes up the median, has the median as part of it. Okay, so that's one line. Now, what if I wanted to find the actual coordinates of the centroid? And again, like I said, your teacher could ask you to do it two ways. Could say, oh, you can use this formula, or maybe you want to just keep this in your back pocket as a way to check to make sure that you got the right answer. So let's go ahead and find the second, a second line containing the median from B to AC. So I'm going to slide this over here. So I want to know B to AC. So when you're finding a median, you have to find the midpoint first. So what is the midpoint of AC going to be? So by now, you know, you add them up and divide by two. So minus three plus seven over two, that's going to give me the X coordinate. And, um, minus 1 minus 3 over 2. That's going to give me the y coordinate. So minus 3 plus 7 is 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. And minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 divided by 2 gives me minus 2. So let's call that midpoint here. So that's going to be 1, 2 right here. We'll call this point E 2 minus 2. So I write three. Okay, so you can see if I draw a line from B to E, there we go. There's my, here's my point of intersection. That's going to be my centroid. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the equation of this line. Okay, so I've got the point. I need the slope. So I want to know what is the slope. And that's an M with this kind of longer tail on it. So the slope of B, E, because that's the line, right? The slope of this line. So again, we use rise over run. So 5 minus minus 2, 5 minus minus 2, and 3 minus 2. Rise over run. 5 minus minus 2 is 7 over 1. So I get the slope is 7. That makes sense. It's very steep, right? Up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and over 1. Yep, that worked. Okay, so I've got the slope, and I have two points. So um, let's use the point 3, 5. So point is 3, 5. And so now I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. This is my x, this is my y, and this is my m. So just plug them all in and solve for b like you did in grade 9. So the slope is 7 times 3 plus b. And that's going to give me 21. And I'm going to subtract it or add it to the other side 21 and that's going to give me 5 minus 21 is my b and b is going to be negative 16. so my equation is going to be y equals 7 x minus 16. okay so i have two equations this one and this one and i want to find where they intersect. So this is going back to uh, linear systems and what it can do is because the other um, this is the median from from B and y equals one quarter x minus one quarter was the median from A. So if I want to know where they intersect I can set these two equations equal to each other because they're already in y equals, right? y equals this and y equals that. So where does this equal that? 
So I'm going to set the two equations equal to each other. So if I say 7x minus 16 is equal to 1 quarter x minus 1 quarter. And now I need to solve for x and then y, right? You always need the two points. Lots of work for this one, isn't it? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply everything by 4 to get rid of this, this 4 in the denominator, just to make my life a little bit easier. So that gives me 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 16 is 64. And that gives me x minus 1. So if I bring the x over here, that's going to give me 27 x's. And I bring the minus 64 over here and add it to 1. That gives me 63. And x is equal to 63 over 27, which reduces nicely. They both divided by 9. That gives me 7 over 3. Okay, so that's my x coordinate. And if you look at the diagram that we have here, x being 7 over 3, that's 2 and 1 third. So 1, 2, and a third. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And we know that this y coordinate is also going to be a fraction because it's not up to 1, right? Okay, so let's find the y. So when x equals 7 thirds, um, let's use this first equation. y equals 7x minus 16 becomes y equals 7 times 7 quarters minus 16. So that's 49 over 4 minus, and 16 is going to be in quarters, would be 64 over 4. And 49 minus 64, uh, that would be negative, negative what? Hmm. 49 minus 64, did I do some, some 64, 4 twos, 24, 64, 49 over 4 minus 64 over 4. And I use the right equation. Okay, so we need to get up the calculator because I don't like to make any more mistakes than I have to. That's minus 15. That did not minus 15. Minus 15 over 4. Oh, look it. Were you yelling at me? That was supposed to be over 3. Oh dear, that's 48 over 3, and that gives me minus, gives me one third. Oh, Miss Havrot, I really don't make mistakes that often. Okay, so needless to say, these things happen. So we have um, the centroid is going to be. 7 thirds, that's why I have so much sympathy for students doing their math. 7 thirds and 1 third. Okay, does that make sense? 7 thirds, 1 third? Well, let's use that formula that we could have used and made our life really easy. Add all the x's up and divide by 3. So our x's are minus 3 plus 3 plus 7. And our y's are minus 1 plus 5 minus 3. Oh, look at all those numbers. So we have 7 over 3. Yes, we got that one. And this gives me 1 third. So there we go. We found the centroid two different ways. One by making a mistake but still getting it. And the other way just by using the formula. Guess which one you would prefer to use. Now actually using this formula, this is if your teacher asks you to use the two equations to solve for the centroid, again, this is what you would have to do. But in the end, you can always check it to make sure you're right, like I did. Okay, so that's kind of a long lesson. Um, again, if we take a look at this diagram here and we put the other line, the other vertex from here to the midpoint. What's the midpoint? of This one's going to be 0 and 2. Right here. 
So if we draw this one on, you can see that the centroid, we still all intersect here. So it didn't matter which two lines you found the equations for. And another really interesting fact, other than this being the center of mass and a balancing point, is that each of these triangles that are made here, all six of them have exactly the same area. And you might, teacher might ask you to prove that somehow. These are all the same area. So that's an interesting little fact for you for using um, the medians and finding the centroid. Hope that helped you out. Bye for now.